Vasily of True Synergy and your True Transformation Success Coach. Now, you may be wondering exactly what that means, so I'm super excited to say that as a result of my coaching programs and workshops, I help you figure out the pain points that have gotten in the way of you achieving your goals. And I love to connect with people who are ready to shift those pain points into possibilities. Now, perhaps you may be saying you've invested enough time in everyone else and you know that now is the time for you. Or perhaps you recognize that you're not living your most fulfilled life and now you want to know what purposeful living looks like. You may also be saying, you know, it's time for change and I know that now is the time. So we're talking about pain points to possibilities, releasing the past and embracing your amazing future. Now I know that sounds pretty awesome, but the reality of it is that most of us hold on to things like hurt and anger, fear, regret, all of those things have often stood in the way of what it means for us to figure out what exciting and joyful living looks like. Now I gotta tell you, I understand what it's like to question whether I'm good enough. And you have probably shrunk back and hidden your gifts and your talents as well. Now, a lot of times we think that it's much easier to hide behind others, to dim our light, just because we don't recognize that there is in fact room enough for all of us. So, you know, how does this thing called the past influence where we are right now in our lives? And more importantly, where we want to go what we want our future to look like. Every experience in our lives has an impact on who we are and more importantly, how we show up for the world. Now, you know what, as I'm sharing this information with you right now, I'm excited to say that yes, I have degrees and I started my own company and I have the privilege of serving some amazing people to help them to transform their lives. But the reality of it is, there was a time when I was not so sure about who I was. You want to know why? Well, when I was in elementary school and middle school, I was bullied. I was chased home from school more times than I care to remember. And all of those experiences really messed with my psyche. It really um, caused me to doubt myself, caused me to wonder whether or not I was good enough. That's why this conversation is so important because as a result of lessons learned and the growth process, I recognize that I am absolutely good enough. You know, one of the things that I do in my Transformation Success Strategy Program is I wanna break down what the past really is and really how it's used to influence us. And I don't think we recognize just how much uh, conversations from the past or experiences have an effect on our lives. You, you know, you could have had a conversation with someone five years ago. You know, perhaps you tried to share some information, you tried to uh, create new ideas, and maybe somebody shot you down. And now you don't even bother to open your mouth to bring something to the table that could be of value. That's a pain point. Or maybe you're the person who has been the caregiver for everybody else in your family, whether it's your children, your spouse, your friends, uh, your parents, and you don't feel like you are worthy of time for yourself. That's a pain point. You know, somebody could have said, hey, you know what? You've got to take care of people in your family, and sometimes you've got to sacrifice yourself to do that. Well, when we hear things like that, that's a past experience that can then lead to you thinking that, you know, I don't deserve to do anything for myself. That is a pain point. I, I like to take the word past, P-A-S-T, and really break it down so that we can understand what it means to recognize and identify those pain points and then see how they're showing up like in our lives right here, right now. Let let's take the letter P. The letter P in the word past, that you can't guess what that means, right? It stands for, yes, pain point. And what is a pain point? It is a challenge. It is a thorn in the side. I'm sure that all of us have heard that phrase before. Or perhaps it's this thing that just 
keeps messing with you, you keep thinking about it, and, and you realize that, that it really is something that has made you feel uncomfortable. So I want to give you an example. So I, I talked about me being bullied in elementary school, middle school. I mean, I cannot tell you the number of times that I was chased home from school. And one incident in particular was not um, about being bullied, at least not this one. There's lots of those, but, but here's, here's what makes this such a reality for me. Sixth grade, middle school, we had a book to read, and I cannot remember the name of the book, but each person was responsible for reading a paragraph in that book. And when it came time for me to read my paragraph, there was a word in there, I'm gonna spell it, B-A-L-C-O-N-Y. Now, you and I both know that that word is spelled balcony. Well, when I got ready to read my part, got to that word and I pronounced it balcony. And can I tell you that there was such a loud laugh and the louder they laughed, the smaller I felt. And I beat myself up for that because I could not believe here I am in sixth grade and you mean to tell me that I pronounced that word incorrectly. So that was a pain point for me. Now, the A in the word past is about allowances. What is it that we allow to happen as a result of the pain point or what don't we allow? So what I recognize is that as I got older, even as an adult in, in corporate America, sitting in meetings, having conversation, knowing that I had something of value to add, but I would not open my mouth. Why? Because I would think about that sixth grade class, that little girl who pronounced the word balcony incorrectly. So what I would do is fast forward that incident and that would keep me from opening my mouth even if I knew what it is I wanted to say. Even if I was comfortable that I knew the answer, I would shrink back. And the other piece of that is that if I didn't know the answer, I was too afraid to even offer any kind of uh, communication or interjection because I didn't want someone to look at me and say, oh, no, nope, that's not it. And then I would feel small again. Now let's talk about the S. The S is the stronghold. Now, when I think of a stronghold, I think about emotion, right? You think about a person who perhaps comes up behind you and, and they're holding you tight and you can't move. That's the stronghold, right? You are secured down and you cannot move. Well, a, a, an emotion that might be associated with that is fear, right? So when I think about my pain point, sixth grade, sitting in class, being laughed at, and then as a result, my, my allowance, the behavior was that I wouldn't open my mouth to speak. Well, the S, the stronghold, that emotion was about feeling intimidated, feeling embarrassed, feeling like I didn't have anything of value to bring to the table, so I would just shut down. The T, oh, the T is the best part of this formula. And here's the reason why, because the T is about transformation. Transformation, what can we do to change how that pain point has affected us? What can we do to change the behaviors that are associated with things that have happened to us maybe yesterday, last week, last year, five years, 10, 15, 20 years ago? There is always an opportunity for transformation. And this is the part that I like the most. And I, I wanna share just a few quick things that can really help us figure out, okay, now that I've identified what these pain points are, and I know the behaviors that I have exhibited as a result, and I also know the emotions associated with it, how can I transform them into something that is going to help me create this amazing future that I've been talking about? Now, let me say this. I do want to provide a disclaimer because while I'm sharing this information, I'm giving you this formula about the past and how you can apply it to your life, I do recognize that each and every one of us have a series of challenges that vary on different levels. And some of those are pretty traumatic. And so you may recognize that while this formula 
sounds like it's something easy to apply, perhaps your pain points require a little bit more. And so if you're the person who feels like perhaps there's an opportunity or a need to seek additional help for those pain points, then by all means, do that for you. You know, when I think about turning those pain points into possibilities, here's the first thing that I would share. And that is reframing what that pain point does to us and how it impacts us. And what I mean by that is that oftentimes when we think about the challenges, when we think about the things that have bothered us, the things that have, um, have caused us to, to go in an emotional tailspin, sometimes we look at that as a, a debilitating factor. But my suggestion is to reframe the pain point so that it not, uh, it's not a debilitating uh, uh, gesture or, or, or part of who we are, but it's more about a, a deliverance factor. Meaning that, you know, we all have stuff. We all have things that God knows we would much rather forget. Conversations, experiences, all of that. And the reality of it is, those are the things that, yes, are part of our history, but they do not have to dictate our future. So when we begin to reframe that pain point, what it says is we just accept the fact that these are things that have happened to us, but they've happened for us. And more importantly, everything that we go through, everything that we go through is something that can be used not just for our growth, but to help someone else along the way. So when we reframe it to think of it that way, then it kind of takes the power away from the pain, the challenge, the hurt, the regret. Like we could go down the list and we could identify all of those emotions associated with the pain point, but reframing it and accepting the fact that, you know what, yeah, it was a part of my history, but here's how I'm going to use it to turn things around. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I would suggest is that define what it is you desire. Now, I know you're probably saying, okay, all right, so what, what do I desire? How does that fit in? How does that connect with this thing called a pain point? Well, the reality of it is if we think about what we desire, more than likely, it is going to be the opposite of the behavior and the emotion associated with that pain point. And, and here's how that works. So I, I shared with you about uh, bullying. I shared with you about my experience in the sixth grade, mispronouncing that word. So what I would say is the, the, the stronghold, the emotion associated with that was that I was feeling intimidated. I was feeling embarrassed about a lot of different things and I might not have said it to anyone. And if someone was looking at me, they probably wouldn't even know, but on the inside, that's what I was feeling. So what I desire is to be able to stand firm, to stand strong in who I am, to know that if I open my mouth, that I can speak something that is meaningful and of value. So that's what I desire. So whatever your pain point is, think about the opposite. What is it that you would like to experience rather than what you did experience in the painful, challenging moment? So that's the second step. What do you desire? So the next thing is that once you figure out, okay, now I've reframed this pain point. I'm thinking of it as a part of my history. It doesn't have to dictate my future. Now I've identified what it is that I actually desire. Who is it that I choose to be in spite of what may have happened to me? The next step is to begin to think about that in your mind. You know, think about what does it mean to stand in my power, to be strong, to be bold, to be confident? Now you fill in the adjectives that describe your pain point and what you desire as a result of it. But once you think about it in your mind, now you're starting to give that reframing of it a little bit more shape, a little bit more character. So think about what does it mean? What does it look like to own who I am? to own the notion of having, yes, that amazing future. Here's the next step. Once you reframe it, once you think about it in your mind, then here is the thing that is just as powerful. It is speaking it out of your mouth. You know, that little sixth grade girl would be saying things like, you know what, 
I'm, I, I can't say anything that anybody would want to hear. I'm not even going to bother. I'm not going to open my mouth. You know what? Every time I say something, it's just not the right thing. So I'm not going to say anything. That's speaking out of my mouth what that little sixth grade girl would have said as a result of that pain point, mispronouncing that word balcony incorrectly. However, when you reframe the pain point, then the language that comes out of your mouth starts to sound something like this. You know what? Yes, I do have something of value to say. And I do have something that people will want to listen to. You know what? I may not always be right and that's okay. I'm confident enough to engage in conversation and know that no matter whether or not I'm right or wrong or indifferent, it is okay because my voice is strong and powerful enough to make a difference. See, that's speaking it out of your mouth, which is the opposite effect of what I would have said and what I did say years later after that sixth grade incident. So that is speaking something different out of your mouth to help shape that future. You know, words mean a lot. Words have power. So when we put them out into the atmosphere, they do begin to have life. So you and I get to choose how we speak that, okay? So the last thing that I would suggest is that once you reframe that pain point, once you've said, okay, this is what I desire, the opposite of the thing that gave you the challenge, and here's how I'm going to think about it, and then I'm going to begin to speak it so it aligns with my thoughts and my desires, the very last step to transform, to shift, to move that pain point into possibility is to then take the action that aligns with that desire, that aligns with those thoughts, that aligns with the words that you're speaking. Because when you take the action, then that means you're opening yourself up to, yes, you're amazing. So what does taking action look like from that pain point that I described to you? Yes, going back to the sixth grader sitting in class, um, speaking that word incorrectly, balcony instead of balcony. But what does that look like? to now move that into someone who is imagining herself opening her mouth, speaking powerfully, and being able to share something of value. Well, that means that that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm connecting with people who can help me to use my voice. I'm connecting with people who are opening up to say, hey, listen, yes, what you have to say is valuable. And yes, I'm actually feeling um, the release of those emotions, not embarrassed if I happen to say something that's incorrect, but feeling like, you know what, it's okay. So I'm taking the action that lines up with my desire, with what I'm thinking, with what I'm speaking. And when we take the action, that's when we get to move into amazing, joyful, fulfilled, exciting, you know, there's so much that when we think about incidents from our past, we just don't recognize how much they influence us, influence our behavior, influence how we feel, how we speak, how we connect with other people, or sometimes how we're disconnected from other people. I cannot tell you the number of times that I've wanted to share information and I've wanted to uh, offer suggestions and ideas, but as a result of that incident, I know for sure that I cut myself down from being able to show up. So what I'm saying to you is that you get to define what your pain point is and then figuring out how do I transform this so that I can create my amazing. So really quickly recapping as we bring this to a close, reframe that pain point. Recognize that yes, it is a part of my history, but it does not have to dictate my future. Define what you desire, the opposite of that pain point. Think about what that looks like. Begin to speak it from your mouth and then take the actions that line up with what you desire, what you're thinking, and what you're speaking. I'm Erica Salib. I am your true transformation success coach, and I look forward to connecting with you real soon.